Hey everyone. So a couple weeks ago, I got a comment on one of my videos asking for me to talk about how I water my garden. And I thought that would be a great topic for a video because watering is one of those things that seems like it should be a lot simpler than it actually is. In fact, I've mentioned before, my husband is starting to help out more in the garden just because he wants to learn more about it. And he asked the other day if he could just come out and water. And I had to tell him no, because he wouldn't know which plants to water, how much to water, all of that that goes into watering your garden the correct amount. Now, I don't know if anyone else was like me, but when I first started both gardening and growing house plants, I thought you watered every day, which sometimes in the garden, depending on the weather, might not be a terrible idea, but for house plants, it was a very terrible idea and I quickly killed a lot of plants. In fact, I have killed more plants from overwatering than underwatering and I think a lot of people are probably in the same boat. Now, the reason that too much water is bad for your plants is that plant roots Although they need water, they need nutrients, they also need oxygen. And if there's too much moisture in your containers for prolonged periods of time, they're not going to get the oxygen they need. This can lead to fungal issues and eventually the roots rotting on your plant. And once you see the signs of root rot on your plant on the outside, like on the stems and the leaves, that's usually one of the last signs that things are going wrong and the root system is potentially already too far gone to save the plant. So I say that so that I can let you all know that overwatering exists. It's not something you wanna do. It's much easier to come back from underwatering than it is overwatering. So when you're in your garden, err more on the side of caution of not enough water versus too much water. But with that, let's go ahead and talk specifics about how I water not only this container garden, but I'll also go into previous container gardens that I had to water in a bit different of a way, just so that hopefully if it's an environment that kind of matches where you're gardening, I can help provide some tips. So the first question you need to answer is how am I going to access water? The easiest method is that there is some sort of faucet out on your garden. Here we have the two decks and there is a hose faucet on each of them. That was one of the things that when we were looking for places to officially buy, I was like, if there is a deck and I'm going to garden, I need a hose hookup outside. That's because the previous garden in the place that we were renting did not have a faucet. So I had to water from inside the house, bringing the water out to the garden. And it's not impossible. In fact, I still had a fairly good sized garden. I'll see if I have any photos or videos of it that I watered using water from inside the house. So if that is your situation and you only have a sink inside, you can obviously water with a watering can. That works perfectly fine. It just might take a little bit longer trips back and forth. What we also did is props to my husband. He found an adapter to connect a garden hose to a sink. And we luckily had a bathroom sink that was close enough to the doors that led out to the deck that we could hook the hose up to the sink and then drag it out into the garden. Now that did mean that I had to take the hose on and off every time I used it, which was a little bit of a pain, but it was still much more efficient than filling up a watering can and going back and forth outside. Also that deck had Southern exposure, which meant that it was the warmest deck that I've ever gardened on got the most amount of sunlight. So sometimes I had to water twice a day and it was much easier to do that with a hose than it was with a watering can. But again, no, it's not impossible. Now, once you figure out how you're going to access water, the next step is figuring out what system you're going to use to water. I've already mentioned watering cans, but let me talk a little bit more about hoses because I've, sort of had kind of a change of heart on hoses recently. So up until now, I've used regular, typical garden hoses. In fact, I have a garden hose, a regular hose hooked up out on the front deck. I do have one currently hooked out on the back deck, which is where I'm gardening right now. And I like them. There are some things that are slightly irritating. One, because I have so many containers, it's hard to maneuver it around the deck without knocking into a container or breaking off some branches of a plant, which I've done. You know, there's just a lot of obstacles here. It's not like a big open space. That's why I don't know. I know hose links are very popular, but I don't think that would necessarily work very well on my deck. The hoses are just not as flexible as I would hope they would be. The other thing is that they do take up 
a good amount of space. The hose on the front deck I have a reel for, um, so when I remember to put it away and reel it up, it doesn't take up that much space. The hose out here is just lying on the deck, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, and that's because I got a different kind of hose on Amazon that I think is the best option for me. So this is the hose I got. It's, I think it, the technical term is an expandable hose because this is what the hose looks like currently. And then as it fills with water, it expands. Two of the main reasons I like this, it is so compact, so it's easy to store. Once I'm done using this, I just plop it into a bucket. I mean, you can see how small this gets, so it doesn't take up a lot of space. The other thing I like about it is what I mentioned, that it's very flexible. So I can go like around my furniture, around my raised beds, a lot easier to maneuver with this hose than it is a regular hose. I don't know if I got the best quality one of these. Again, I think I chose it on Amazon and just got the cheapest option of what I could find because I wasn't sure if I could like it. So I know that there's probably like better quality ones. I mean, sometimes water drips out of this because it is fabric, but so far so good. The only thing that I don't like as much is that when I'm done using this, you can't leave water in it like you can with a regular hose. So when I'm done using this, I have to turn off the water source to the hose while leaving it on for my drip irrigation. Then I have to empty out the hose completely and then I store it. Again, it's not like it takes a ton of time, but it's just an extra step, which I'm fine doing. But when I have people watching my plants while we're out of town, I feel like that's a lot to try to explain or make them do every time they water my garden. So that's why I have the regular hose hooked up now. We were just out of town. We're going out of town again. So I have that hooked up just for the plant sitters when they come over to make it a little bit easier. But after that is done, and I know I'm here for a while, this one is going back in place. And I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna replace the one up front or not. But if you do use an expandable hose, let me know if there's a brand that you really like. Um, again, I just found this on Amazon. I'll link it down below the one that I got, but I would really like to know if there is something that's a bit more, I don't know, higher quality. You're also not supposed to leave this in the sun. So that's why I store it in a bucket once I'm done. So it seems like they're a bit more fragile. We'll see how longevity goes, but in terms of actually using it in my garden, it has been easier for me than just a regular hose. Other ways to water include self-watering pots, which I do have a couple of. I have the two aqua pots and then I have one from Home Depot that one of my rhubarbs is in. And I think I have one small self-watering container too. That is it my cherry tree, but self-watering containers, I'm still kind of playing around with. I think the aqua pots are definitely the largest pots that I have that are self-watering. And so far, I think it's been two months. Those have worked great. I fill them about once a week. We'll see if once we get into our really hot days of summer, I have to do that more often, but that's been really nice because again, when I had the plant sitters over, if I know that we're gonna be gone for just a week, I know those plants are fine and I don't have to worry about anyone watering them. So that has worked really well. So if you do have a garden and maybe you don't have a hose hookup outside, get some self-watering pots you won't have to water them as often and hopefully that can save you some time. And then last, I'm gonna talk about my favorite thing that I recommend everybody set up if you can and that is some sort of irrigation system. I have a lot of videos on this. I did a very long one recently setting up the irrigation back here. So I will link down all of my irrigation videos below to go into the details of how you set those up. But again, I cannot explain how life-changing is that over dramatic but how life-changing it really was in the garden one when we're gone now i know that the garden is going to water automatically again the plant sitters come over and just water the plants that aren't hooked up to drip but i would say 85 to 90 percent of my garden is on drip so i don't have to worry about that when i'm out of town also I really don't have to worry about it at all because it runs automatically in the morning. Right now, well, we've had some rain. I'd say it's running maybe every two or three days. All I have to do is adjust the schedule if I need it to water more often. And that takes a couple seconds and a few buttons and then it's running when I need it to. So I can come out in the morning, my garden's already watered. I can do all of the other tasks that I find much more enjoyable in the garden than watering. So yes, if you don't have an irrigation system set up, definitely look into it. I don't think I've spoken to any gardener that's ever regretted setting up irrigation, especially in a container garden when things can dry out a little more quickly. So again, the videos will be linked down below. 
of everything that I have showing how I set it up and definitely try it out in your garden. So those are the different ways that you can water your garden. Let's talk a little bit about how specifically to water because there are some things that I didn't realize at first when I started watering my own garden. The first thing is to make sure you leave room at the top of your container. Leave about an inch because if you fill the soil right to the top, you're going to be trying to water your container and water is going to be dripping over the sides instead of staying in the soil. It's just going to take you much longer to water. That's something I've run into when I first started gardening, but also with houseplants too. So whether it's houseplants, garden plants, make sure you leave that inch gap between the lip of the container and then down to where the soil is so that you can put the water in there and then it can slowly soak through into the soil. Also, when you are watering, make sure that you're watering thoroughly. This was also something that took me a little bit of time to realize, but you wanna water until you see water coming out of the bottom. That way you know that the entire container is saturated and the roots can find water everywhere in the container, not just at the top. The roots are gonna go where it has the water and the nutrients. So if all the water's at the top, that's what they're going to stay. It's gonna make the plant much less stable, especially if you get into some of those hotter days and a much smaller root system too. So make sure you're watering the entire container until you see water draining out the bottom. That also probably means you're not gonna to have to water as often because you're watering more thoroughly. It's also best to water at the soil. So if you're using an irrigation system, I mean, typically, especially if it's drip irrigation, the emitters are gonna be right at the soil level. If you're using a hose or a watering can, get that down between the leaves and as close to the soil as you can. I have definitely had some fungal issues arise from leaves that are staying too wet. I have had some leaf scorch from when leaves have been wet during the middle of the hottest periods of the day. The fungal issues now are happening mostly from too much rain and humidity, so I don't wanna add any extra water to the leaves of my plants. Plus, a lot of the times if you are watering above the leaves, especially on plants where the leaf canopy is very thick and might cover the container, the water might not be actually getting to the soil. So it is best to water directly at the soil near the root ball of the plant. Now let's talk about when to water. It is recommended to water first thing in the morning. That way the plant has had time to absorb the water, especially as the day goes on and it gets hotter. But I also think that the best time to water is whenever you have time to water. So if you can only get out in the afternoon, water then. If you can only get out in the evening, water then. It's going to be much better to water your plants when they need it versus, well, it's nighttime now, so I'm gonna let my plants wilt all through the night and then water them in the morning. Like water them when you can water, when they need water. Same thing if you have to water twice a day, go ahead and do that. You don't have to wait till one specific time. On the flip side though, the best thing about an irrigation system is it waters the same time every day or every other day. So an irrigation system can help with that more regular consistent watering. It's also the best for the plants if they can get water around the same time every day. But again, these aren't hard and fast rules. So basically get water into your garden whenever you can that works best in your schedule. But recommendation is for early in the morning. All right, now let's talk about frequency probably the most complicated part of this because the frequency is different for every garden, is different for every container in my garden, is different for every plant that might be in the same container as another plant in my garden. So the frequency of when to water is all, it depends. I would not trust any information that says container garden should be watered every day because mine definitely should not or container garden should be watered all once a week because again, Mine definitely should not, and every plant in my garden is a little bit different. So here is a general guideline of what I will do when I'm watering my garden. First of all, I will either look at or check the soil. Typically I can look at the soil and if it's darker, that means the soil is still moist. If I can't really tell, I'll stick my finger in, but I'll also look at my plants. If they all look like they are fully saturated with water. I don't see any sort of a little bit of wilt, although I don't wanna wait for it to wilt to water. But if everything looks good, the soil looks dark, if I need to stick my finger and I will, then I won't water. But this is a little bit different for different plants. So if I have certain plants that either the plant itself likes to have more water or have plants in like terracotta containers or grow bags that need to be watered more often because they dry out. I'll also check those all individually and just make sure that they are good to go. And again, you'll kind of get into a rhythm with your garden. Right now, 
our highs are in the 70s, low 80s. We're not super hot yet. And I know in that case, it's really every like three days that I have to water. Again, I'll check the ones that typically dry out the fastest or like to have more water, but I get into the rhythm of knowing my own garden. But if you wanna be safe, check your plants. Look at the soil, stick your finger in. If it's dry down to like the first knuckle, then go ahead and give your garden and your plants some water. Now, like I said, Frequency doesn't always stay the same throughout the entire growing season. So here are some of the different factors that will impact the frequency with which you're watering. First one is obviously the weather. If it's raining a lot, you don't have to water your garden. And yes, rain can actually overwater your garden and cause root rot, which I have had happen a few years ago. Luckily, not lately. Uh, other thing with weather, the sunnier and hotter and windier it is, the more often you're gonna have to water. Obviously with the heat, that's going to evaporate the water. With the wind, that's also going to dry out your containers. So windier and hotter, you're probably gonna have to water your garden. So get to know the weather, look at the weather forecast. I'm sure every gardener knows you're constantly checking the forecast to see what's going to happen that day. So just know that the weather is obviously going to impact how often you're watering your garden. Next is container type. I do have a whole video on the different types of containers and how porous they are, how well draining they are. So I'll link that down below too. But basically, the more porous a container, the faster it's gonna dry out. Grow bags are the most porous. It's a fabric with a lot of tiny holes in it. That's how it drains. There is no one specific drainage hole. So those dry out super fast. Terracotta dries out super fast. Um, wood, I would say it's kind of in the middle. And then once you get into like plastic or glazed containers, those take the longest to dry out because they're not porous material. So they're able to hold the water a lot better than say terracotta or a grow bag. So you can use this information on container types and how well they hold water when selecting the best containers for your garden. If you know you live somewhere where it rains a lot, you might want more terracotta or grow bags so that they drain the water more easily. If you live in a place where it's a hotter, drier climate, you might want to get some glazed pots, ceramic pots or plastic pots because you know they'll hold water better. Also, while I'm on container type, make sure every container has some sort of drainage hole, or if it's a grow bag that drains on its own, I would not trust a pot out here without a drainage hole because I can't control the rain. Even if I could control the water 100%, like let's say it never rained, I only hand watered my garden, I still wouldn't trust myself to water something that didn't have a drainage hole, but you never know what the rain's gonna do. So make sure any sort of container is either something that has a drainage hole or is like a grow bag where it's just porous and the water will naturally drain out of it. The next thing that will impact frequency is the size of the container. So I know that I'm going to have to water my eight inch pots of gomfrina a lot more often than I have to water my 30 something inch pot that has my beach plum tree in it. So the larger the pot, the larger the container, the less often you're going to have to water. So for me, it's again my really large diameter pots, my wood raised beds, those are fairly large, so I don't have to water those as often as I have to water some of my smaller containers. The next thing that'll impact frequency is soil type. So there are different types of soil that some will drain a lot faster than others. If you've ever purchased soil that's specifically made for uh, cactus mix, that is very well draining because again, cacti don't need a lot of moisture held into the soil. But if you do want to create something that does hold more moisture, you can add perlite or vermiculite. So know that not only the type of soil that you buy will have its own kind of drainage ability, but you can add things to it to either improve the drainage or make it hold water for a little bit longer. But just be aware of the types of potting soil that you're using and how well they drain. The next thing that can impact frequency is the plant type. So some plants like water more frequently. Some plants are very drought tolerant. So in my garden, I think I have lantana that's drought tolerant, cone flower, blanket flower. I'm sure there's a few others that I'm forgetting, but if you are someone that doesn't want to have to water very often, or again, it's not as easy for you to water, look into getting some drought tolerant plants. There are a ton of great drought tolerant plants that'll at least save you a little bit of time having to water in the garden. So again, 
based on the types of plants you're growing, not all of them are gonna need the exact same amount of water at the exact same frequency. And then the last thing I just wanna mention about frequency is that you wanna water more often when plants are getting established and the root balls are very small because the smaller the root ball, again, the less area they have to go and look for water. So I typically will find myself watering every day at first when I'm planting something new. And then as time goes on, I have to water less frequently. Now, I also wanna mention that you don't want to let your plants sit in water. Again, causing root rot for your plants. So again, make sure they have drainage holes. You might have to look into adding lifts potentially for your plants if they're sitting on a flat surface and that's not allowing the water to drain out. Um, I do have some lifts on some of my containers here. If you have anything sitting on a saucer, which I don't have a ton of, except for any of my plants on wheels, I'll tip water out of those. Again, just so the base of the plant isn't just sitting in water. I wanna make sure that I'm giving my root ball a little bit of time to dry out between watering. The last thing I wanted to cover is watering while out of town. I've already mentioned that a little bit, but my two go-tos are my irrigation system. And I really like the Orbit Beehive timer, which I have on the front deck because I can see that from my phone and control it from my phone. So I know if it's ran, let's say it rained while we're out of town, I can turn it off for that day and then turn it back on. So I like that so that I can control it, even though I'm not in my garden but even if you don't have that just having a drip system that you know is going to run while you're gone relieves a little bit of the stress that i feel when we're out of town and then of course we have our plant sitters so up until this year our cat sitters i would just put all the pots together lay the hose next to the pots send them a photo of the ones that they had to water the cat sitters would do that i wouldn't overcomplicate it for them so i would just say once a day you're good uh, this year because my garden basically doubled in size with this back deck i looked into like actual plant sitters in chicago and i found chicago plants which is an actual store too that they sell house plants um, but a lot of their services is plant and garden sitting so they came over i gave them detailed notes feel free to give as much detail as possible that'll make the job easier for whoever is watching your plants and because i knew that they understood plants like they know that not everything has to be watered every day so they were able to be i guess a little bit more customized with the plant city. So that was really nice. Again, that was Chicago plants, um, just local here. So look up your like city or town name and plant sitters. See if anything comes up if you need someone to come over and check on your plants while you're out of town. Other just random things that I wanted to mention is even though it's raining, you still might have to water some plants. This is again, a mistake that I've learned from. So right behind me are my two morning glory. They are growing in a flower box and the flower box is completely underneath the awning of our roof. So even when it pours, those don't get any water. So I do have to water those myself. Um, the raspberries on the front deck, I think are the only plants that have a leaf canopy that's thicker and larger than the pot they're growing in. So those I do have to water again, even though it's rained because the canopy is not letting the majority of the rain actually hit the soil of the pot. But I think those are all of my tips for how I water my garden. If you have any other questions, let me know down below. If there's anything else that you do to water your container garden or your regular garden, leave those tips down below as well. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.